Welcome to Fantastic Plastic, a series of SolidWorks video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. In Fantastic Plastic, I'll be presenting strategies and techniques for injection molded plastic part design using SolidWorks CAD software. I'm Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer with the Demonic Group. The Demonic Group is a full-service product development consultancy located just outside Chicago, Illinois. In the previous installment of Fantastic Plastic, we took a look away at creating a lip and groove detail using the uh, Thin Feature Extrude and Thin Feature Extrude Cut tools in SolidWorks. However, that was on a planar face where the two parts coming together had a nice straight junction. Uh, in this week's video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at modifying that technique to have it work on non-planar geometry. So here I have this uh, box shape with a kind of wavy top. If we were to rotate the model, you can see that the uh, the top is curved in all directions. It's definitely not straight or planar. I couldn't come at uh, removing material with a cut, so we're going to adopt a slightly different technique. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a plane at an arbitrary distance above where I want the, the lip to start. Uh, as long as we're above where the lip starts, uh, this distance, uh, the exact distance is not important. It just needs to be greater than the final lip height. And we're going to be using uh, the surfacing, some of the surfacing tools to create this geometry. And here I've used a surface offset to create, to find the overall height of the lip. So here a hundred thousandths. And now I'm using the very powerful surface untrim tool. And what this does is reveal the original shape of the surface. The surface is not actually this ribbon shape. It's a larger uh, surface with straight sides that has then been uh, kind of trimmed back and that trim information is stored internally uh, to the surface but it can also be revealed. So with the uh, with a 0% modifier here it just reveals the original size of the surface but you can also make it a little bit bigger. Uh, this percentage is kind of arbitrary. I'm not really entirely certain uh, how it affects how much material it's going to add. We just want to make sure that our surface is just a little bit bigger than the final uh, profile of the lip. So I'm going to hide this surface body for a second so it's a little easier to see what we're doing. And I'm going to actually roll in between these features so we can take a look at Sketch 4. So just like we had done with the uh, planar lip and groove example, I have converted the inside edge of the wall into a sketch. And this sketch is sitting on that plane that we had created previously that's above the lip height. So this will allow me to create a thin feature extrude that then terminates uh, at, the, at the normal wall of the part. I'm using the up to body command which is uh, really powerful when designing plastic parts because we want to make sure that the, uh, the feature ends correctly at the body instead of uh, terminating at a surface or something. We don't want to inadvertently model undercut so using the up to body is a really powerful tool. Uh, unlike the planar lip example, because I have yet to define the height of the lip, I cannot create the draft in the feature. I'm going to have to do that after the fact. So this is obviously not correct. The, the lip is too tall, but when we show that surface body we had created with the offset and the untrim, we can use that with the surface cut tool to define our lip height. I no longer need that surface, so I clean it up with the, uh, the body delete tool. And there I was able to easily create uh, the lip with that surface offset. The final thing I need to do is come in with the draft tool. And this is a parting line draft situation. I don't have a neutral plane. I can't, I want to draft from this, uh, all these edges, which go up and down in regards to a neutral plane. So I'm going to use the, uh, the parting line draft tool. And here, a quick way to speed up selection is select tangency and I can select tangency on the other side, make sure that the arrows are going the right way, indicating that the draft will be applied to the correct face, and we'll click OK. And now SolidWorks goes in and adds that draft. So non-planar lip and grooves, uh, really easy to do. Just be aware of uh, the fact that everything's non-planar, so you've got to create that surface offset before you create your, your lip feature. And if I was doing this uh, as a groove, I would simply have the offset go the other way. It would uh, be offset in towards uh, the part for the groove depth, and then instead of using that extrude thin, I would use an extrude thin cut to remove the material.
I hope you enjoyed this week's SOLIDWORKS video tutorial presented by the Demonic Group. Please subscribe to the Demonic Group on YouTube by clicking our logo in the bottom right of the screen to stay up to date on new video releases. As well, click the SOLIDWORKS icon to be taken to our website where you can download the example SOLIDWORKS files used in this week's video. And finally, check out other great content by the Demonic Group, Will It Fill It and Surfaces and Splines by clicking the video links on the left of the screen.